The normal artery wall is composed of three layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. The intima, or inner layer, is composed of a single layer of cells called the endothelium. The media contains mostly smooth muscle cells that enable the vessel to dilate or constrict. The adventitia, or outermost layer, is composed mostly of fibroelastic tissue. The adventitia is separated from the media by the external elastic membrane. LDL is a macromolecule that can enter the artery wall. The atherosclerotic process begins when LDL accumulates abnormally within the artery wall at a rate determined by plasma concentrations of LDL and the condition of the endothelium. Elevated LDL levels, as defined by NSEP, are thought to promote atherosclerosis. LDL passes through endothelial cells and enters the intima, where it can undergo a process called oxidation. Oxidized LDL is toxic, and this initiates an inflammatory process. Monocytes respond by migrating from the bloodstream into the artery wall, where they mount the inflammatory response. Now called macrophages, they engulf the cholesterol-rich oxidized LDL and become foam cells. When the foam cells die, they release their lipid content, creating what is known as a lipid core. A fibrous cap consisting largely of collagens and elastin forms over the lipid core. The fibrous cap represents an attempt by the body to heal the lesion. Continued plaque growth caused by accumulation of LDL within the intima causes the external elastic membrane to expand. This compensatory enlargement, known as arterial remodeling, allows the vessel to maintain an adequate, if not normal, lumen area and blood flow. For this reason, angiography, which visualizes only those plaques that encroach upon the lumen, underrepresents the extent of atherosclerosis. However, as a burden of plaque increases, the artery can no longer compensate by expanding outward, and the plaque begins to protrude into the lumen. This generally occurs when plaque involvement reaches about 40% of the vessel circumference. Under certain conditions, such as may be caused by biomechanical and hemodynamic stresses, disruption of plaques can occur. Plaques prone to rupture include those that contain a large lipid core covered by a thin fibrous cap. Often these plaques have not penetrated the luminal area and hence are not visible angiographically. When a plaque ruptures, the lipid core comes into contact with the blood. This sets the stage for the formation of a thrombus or clot. The thrombus may partially or totally block an artery, causing an abrupt reduction in blood flow. Partial blockage of the lumen may cause the symptoms of angina. Complete blockage of the vessel lasting more than two to four hours can cause an acute event such as MI. Healing may also take place. In fact, plaque rupture with subsequent healing is now believed to be the major mechanism by which atherosclerotic lesions progress and narrow the lumen. Plaques that heal generally have a higher fibrotic composition than before, making them more stable and less